Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the close of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. We normally encounter as priests is to try and explain everything. Certain things are difficult to explain, we have to agree, and probably they have certain areas where they need to be explained further. So I'm not going to bore you with an explanation of what the Trinity is. I think we leave that and go and do some research. But I'm going to, we are going together to look at what the Spirit, the, the Trinity is around us today. What does it mean for you and I? Whether we understand what it is or not, but can we relate to, this, to the Trinity in this day and age? So we begin with the first reading where we realize the talk of God, just God and nothing else in the Old Testament. Moses is saying, have you seen this before? God fighting for his people. God getting involved directly with his people in day-to-day -day activities. We find God fighting for his people. God protecting his people. God being with his people. What kind of a God are we looking at? It's a God who's interested in in your life. A God who's taking part in your life just like he did before. The big question, how does God get involved in my life? When I'm troubled, where is God? Those are serious questions. When there are tsunamis and whatever happens, where is God? Southern Africa is crying, there is drought. Zambia is most heat. I don't want to go back there anytime soon. Where is God in times of drought and all those things? Well, one explanation that the scientists tell us is say, no, some things is what because of what we have done. Quite okay. Maybe we've cut too many trees. There is nothing to block the wind. Okay, that's an explanation. But still one goes on to say, yes, we have done that. But where is God? Very difficult question. Because quite often we want God to be the way we would want somebody to respond. Okay, I'm hungry. The God I want now is one who gives me ice cream. Here I go again with food. Let's leave it there. Um, I have a flat tire. God, I want you to come and give me a brand new tire. You are dictating to God the response you are expecting. God is always with us, is always around us. Let's look at Christ. So when you're looking at the, at the Trinity, we are basically looking at God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. A community of three individuals or three persons. Now let us look at these persons, how they affect our lives. So we start with God the creator. God created anything good. Anything that you can think of that is good is God's creation. Sometimes other things that can be considered as good 
they are good in as far as they direct us back to God. We go through situations that are bad, but at the end of the day we say, oh, thank God that I went through that. I discovered God. It was bad because we are going through it. We are not happy about it, but at the end of the day, it was good because it directed us back to where we are supposed to be. The question is, how do we know? And nobody wants to go through a difficult time despite it leading us back to God. We all want to be happy and be led back to God. So that's the, uh, the one aspect of God. He creates. And then the Son comes into play, Jesus Christ. When things were in chaos, there was disorder on earth, and God said, who's going to go down there and correct things? And probably Christ raised his hand and said, here I am, I come to do your will. Christ, or the second person, comes in as a restorer of order. Comes in to, to build a bridge between that which was lost and that which should be the relationship with God. That's what Christ comes to do. Now if we look at the life of Christ through the gospel, we find him being obsessed, I'm using the word obsessed deliberately, obsessed with people that are on the margins. Obsessed with people that are troubled. Obsessed with people that have no one to talk to. Neglected. One word, I'm avoiding to use it, but it will help us understand a little further. Obsessed with prostitutes. He allowed the prostitute to touch his feet, poured oil, and she used her hair to dry the feet. That's how far Christ accepted him, opened up himself so as to create the bond that was destroyed because of our own doings. How much are we ready to go in trying to build the bridges? It's not easy. It's not easy to build bridges. It's not easy to restore that which was lost. It takes a lot. But how much are we ready to go? Are we going to be like Christ, accepting anything and everything for the sake of goodness, accepting anything that comes at our way, humiliation so that the other person can have life. And it is in that difficult moment that Christ tells the disciples, I will be with you always. And also the second reading gives us a hint to say, whenever you claim in the name of the Father, it's the Spirit. So the Spirit who is the third person in the line becomes in as the consoler, comes in as the director, comes in as an accompaniment. Each and every day, the Spirit is supposed to be with us. Yes, there is a difficulty again. Do we cooperate with the Spirit? Oh, it's life. We go on our life. Spirit, Holy Spirit, you sit here for now. I'm going somewhere. I'll find you. Or we are saying, Holy Spirit, let's go together. I'm trying to follow you, but my steps are failing. Please hold on for me. Holy Spirit, please now, I feel different. But please don't abandon me. This is what I want to do. But please don't go anywhere. Please, please, please. Quite often, it's not easy to cooperate with the Spirit. Why? Simply because the spirit is not of the flesh. The spirit is of the spirit. The spirit desires to fulfill the commandment that Christ said in the gospel today. Or authority is given to me. The moment we accept that authority, we are abiding to the spirit. The moment we are accepting our own authority, we have authority as well. We are not abiding by the Spirit. At times I joke to say, I think we give the devil too much credit. No, it was the devil. No, I was tempted. It was the devil. At times we, maybe we can say, no, it was my decision. 
Because the devil comes, yes. We are tempted, we are enticed. And on the other side, Christ and the Holy Spirit, they are enticing us. But we make the choice. We make the decision. Whether to pick up a pen that has dropped near a desk and put it back to the owner on the desk, or to pick up that pen and nicely put it in our pockets and without being seen. It's a decision. Attractions are given to us. But at the end of the day, the devil won't come and put say, come, come, come. No. The Holy Spirit won't come and say, come, come. No. But we, okay, you make one stay. This is nice. Okay. I know it's not too good, but I'll come back. Those are the decisions we make. So the Trinity above all helps us to realize the creator, the restorer, and the comforter. That is God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. And the Catholic Church, good old Catholics, every time they want to do something, they say in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of. What does that mean? It means what we are doing, we are doing it in the light of God. What we want to do, we are saying, God, this is your given opportunity to us. And at the end of this, of the, at the end, my, one of my favorite phrases is, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. That which is not easy to say when you fail. It's very easy to say when you, you, you succeed. Because it's all about glory to God. So whatever we do, we begin it in the name of. And whatever outcome that comes out, as long as we've done our way, as long as we've done our best, as long as we've tried to follow what we are expected of, we say glory be to the Father and to the Son. In good times, we thank God. In bad times, we also thank God. Because we never know at what point God is talking to us. God might talk to us in good times. When everything is merry, we are very happy. God can talk to us. God might also talk to us when nothing is working. Everything is in tatters. Everything is in shambles. God still communicates to his own. And thus, as Catholics, we begin in the name of and we end with glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit.